now that we've designed a transistor amplifier to be biased in the middle of the IE load line, let's couple it to an AC signal and amplify it. That's what coupling capacitors are used for, and the amplifier we're going to first look at is a common emitter amplifier, kind of the bread and butter amplifier for most amplifier circuits. The objective here is to couple an AC signal to the previous transistor circuit that we designed. We like to determine the small signal or AC circuit model for that circuit, and then simplify to find the Thevenin equivalent, also known as the two-port model for the resulting amplifier. Now, recall from before, the circuit on the right was designed so that the Q point was at six volts. Oops. Try it again. At six volts at the collector, six milliamps. I would like to inject an AC signal on top of that. When I do that, I don't want to change the DC operating point because I went to a lot of trouble to design that circuit to set the Q point. If I add anything in DC, I'm going to mess up my previous design. So let's take the three nodes, the collector, the emitter, and base, and connect them to the outside world with capacitors. At DC, capacitor is an open circuit, so this circuit is completely decoupled from the outside world to DC, and I don't mess up my Q point. When I do that, I've got three different options. I've got one input, one output, but I've got three terminals. That gives me three ways to connect it. First option, I could take the emitter, tie it to ground, call this my input, call that my output. That's called a common emitter amplifier. The terminal that you tie to ground is the term for the common. Uh, second option, I could take the collector, tie it to ground. In that case, this is my input, and here's my output. That's called a common collector amplifier. We'll look at that in the next video. Uh, third option is common base. Take the base, tie it to ground. Here's your input. Here's your output. That's called a common base amplifier. Again, we'll look at that in the next video. First one, I want to look at the simplest case, well, the most common case, the common emitter amplifier, the bread and butter amplifier for most amplifier circuits. For common emitter amplifier, I'm going to take the emitter, tie it to ground. Here's your output. Here's your input. And again, it's an AC signal. DC signals won't get through those decoupling capacitors. Only the AC signal will. And I'm not going to analyze the DC circuit because I already did that before. The DC circuit sets the Q point. The Q point is at 6 volts. I wanted to use superposition and say that the total output will be a DC term plus an AC term. DC term I've already done. Now let's find the AC term. I'm going to replace everything with this AC component. VCC, for example, is VCC plus zero sine of omega t. Since I'm doing, only doing the AC component, that looks like ground for AC analysis. Vn is some sine wave, it's just Vn. Capacitors, I'm assume they're large. So the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over j omega c. If that's small relative to your resistors, I can say that's roughly zero, negligible. And in that case, I'll have the emitter shorted to ground. And I've got a couple capacitors. Now, one problem I'm going to have is the diode. I'd like to use the small signal model for diode We've been assuming diodes are ideal. They have a 0.7 volt drop across them when turned on. For AC analysis, I need a better model. If I take my Q point, say right there, the slope is not infinity. It's actually got a finite slope to it. Take the tangent to the VI characteristics for a diode. The tangent is the slope or the resistance. What you wind up with is the resistance of a diode is NVT over ID, which is roughly 0.052 volts for silicon over your operating point. That's your DC operating point, your Q point. 
With that, I can replace the circuit with its small signal model. Again, my power supply, my tw plus 12 volts. There's a constant, the AC term is zero, so I treat that as zero volts for the AC analysis. My diode, which is right here, gets replaced by its slope, RF. That's 0 0.02, 0 0.052 over the Q point, which is 1733 ohms. Oops. Uh, now let's draw the circuit equivalent. Let's start at the input, let's do a sine wave. My input goes to VB, fast or small, so I'll ignore it. At VB, I've got R2 going to ground. I've got R1 also going to ground. And this is AC analysis. The AC portion of your 12 volt source is also zero. The 12 volt source is a constant with zero AC component since it goes to ground for AC analysis. I've got RF going to the emitter and the emitter goes to ground. Uh, emitter, this is right here also connects to the collector through a current source, 200 IB, that's IB. That connects to ground through a 1K resistor. And here's your output. Kind of messy, so let's clean it up some. Clean it up and this is the circuit on the top. That's the small signal model for the previous amplifier. Trick in electronics, if I can use Thevenin and equivalents, I make life a whole lot easier. The Thevenin and equivalent for a circuit with an input and an output is called a two-port model. The circuit's shown below. I'd like to come up with a two-port model for the above circuit. Just like the Thevenins, I'd run a couple tests. Whatever test I do in the bottom circuit must match the top circuit because the two are equivalent. So let's look at some of the tests. Suppose I want to find Rn. To find Rn, what I would do is take the output to short it that sets V out equals zero, AIV out becomes zero, the input resistance just becomes Rn. Do the same thing to the top. Let's take the output, short it, measure the resistance looking in, and fairly obviously, this is a better color, Rn is R1 in parallel, with R2 in parallel with RF. That's one test. Second test, suppose I want to find AI. The way you find AI is take the output, tie it to one volt, measure the input voltage. That'll be AI. Let's do the same thing here. Let's take the output, tie it to one volt, measure the input voltage, and pretty clearly there's nothing there driving the circuit. I get AI equals zero. Now let's find R out. To find R out, I would take the input, short it to ground, that sets this term to zero, measure the resistance at the output, I get R out. So let's take the input, set it to zero, that makes IB equal to zero, that makes this equal to zero. The resistance I see looking in is just RC then. So I get R out is RC. Last test, let's find A out. To find A out, let's apply one volt at the input. Which is the output voltage, I'm gonna get A out. Do the same over here. Let's make this one volt. And let's see what I get. If this is one volt, IB is one over RF. This current is 200 over RF. This voltage is actually backwards. Backwards gives you minus sign. Minus RC times beta over RF. That's your two-port model.
if you plug in numbers, you get the following. AI was zero, so I didn't draw it. The input impedance was R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with RF, gives you 928 ohms. Output impedance was RC, that's 1,000 ohms. And the gain is beta, 200, times RC over RF, minus 115. Here's your two-port model for the common emitter amplifier that we designed. What's nice about the two-port model is the circuit on the right is way simpler than the circuit on the left. It's much easier to analyze. It tells you that this has a voltage gain of 115, input impedance of 928 ohms, output impedance of 1,000 ohms. That's what I would expect if I designed it or built it. Let's check. If I went into multi-SIM, I could build that circuit use coupling capacitors that are large. I used 100 microfarads, in theory infinity, but fix something practical like 100 ohms, 100 microfarads. Apply a sine wave in. My input is 0.1 millivolts sine wave. The output is 13 millivolts. That gives you a gain of 130. It's supposed to be 115. Again, says the simulation is not exactly the same as the analysis. Capacitors have some effect on the gain. Again, they're not infinity. There's a minus sign. If you look at the input versus output, they're out of phase also. Again, it's actually minus 130. And the lab, if you built the circuit, again, you wouldn't get a gain of exactly minus 115 because resistors have a tolerance. Your transistor has a tolerance. Again, getting it's 200 plus or minus 100. Because of those variations, you're going to get slightly different gains. But that's part of the intent of the labs as well as the simulation. Design the circuit on paper. And that gets the values of the resistors that you need to bias it in the middle of the active region. And also tells you the gain you expect. Simulate it in multi-sim. That's a nonlinear simulation, taking into account the nonlinearities of the transistor and the diode. Takes into account the fact that the capacitors are not infinitely large. And finds a better approximation for the output voltage you'll get. When you build a circuit in the lab, that's the actual gain of the circuit that you have uh, with no approximations. This gives us the common emitter amplifier. Next, we'll look at the common base, common collector.